stories waking up in a sterile hospital room. I found that reality was worse than any nightmare I had ever dreamed. The medical devices surrounding me made monotonous sounds, contrasting with the wreckage of my ruined future. The smell of disinfectants hung in the air, and the bright light of the lamps mercilessly illuminated my scarred body. The doctor entered with a serious expression on his face. Mr. Thompson, you have spent several weeks in a coma. Unfortunately, you were unable to say goodbye at the funeral, he said gravely, and his words hit me like lead. Funeral, the word gave me goosebumps and I felt a dryness in my throat. Yes, your fiancé, she's gone. We couldn't wake you earlier. I'm sorry for your... The spoken word loss echoed in my empty soul. I couldn't remember the accident couldn't remember how a joyous event had turned into mourning, lying in bed and trying to comprehend the horrifying reality. I saw a nurse entering the room. Her gaze was full of sympathy and professional calm as she checked my IV. It's difficult, but you're strong. You can handle it, handle it. Echoed in me the word mingling with the shards of my shattered dreams. The room grew even colder. The silence was broken by the quiet voice of the chaplain standing in the doorway, offering me words of comfort. Often the toughest challenges lead us to unexpected discoveries. Let your inner strength guide you through the darkness. I nodded silently, sinking into a contemplation of loss. The room that had once been a place of my carefree ignorance had turned into a place of harsh realities and painful acceptance, leaving me alone with my dashed hopes. I whispered quietly into the empty room, what do I do now? But the echo of my question went unanswered, carried away by the wind into an uncertain future. The hospital room became my sanctuary, protecting me from the harsh reality waiting for me outside its walls. My parents entered, their faces full of concern, yet clouded with expectation. Tension hung in the air as they looked at each other. My mother interrupted the silence. Benjamin, we've been so worried about you. You've been through so much. But now you have to think about the future. The future. The word was the fulfillment of their unspoken desires when they broached the subject of my marriage to Beatrice, the daughter of their business partners. The space of the room began to seem even more confined and the air even more stifling. But mom, I can't just accept this. I need time to recover and make sense of what happened. I pleaded. My voice shook with tension. Dad the epitome of sternness, leaned toward me. Ben, this marriage isn't just important to you. It's about the future of our family, the continuation of the business. Beatrice is the sensible choice. I felt my parents' expectations begin to weigh on me, becoming an inexorable force. What about my desires and my happiness? I objected, letting my frustration erupt. My mother's voice softened as she tried to calm the storm in me. Benjamin, we realize this isn't easy, but in time you will come to love Beatrice's qualities. It will be for the best, for the best. Those words sounded like an empty promise. When they left, I felt the weight of their expectations on my shoulders. The room that had once been a sanctuary now felt like a cage. Every breath was a struggle against the invisible shackles pulling me tighter and tighter. I turned to the window, my eyes reflecting a distant longing for freedom. In this vulnerable moment, the hospital chaplain became a beacon of comfort in the darkness. Sometimes the path we are destined for is not the path we would choose for ourselves. True strength is found in acceptance, in finding meaning within what we are destined for. The chaplain looked at me with sympathy in his eyes. Destiny. The word sounded like a distant melody accompanying the realization that my fate had been determined without my input. When the chaplain left, I struggled against invisible shackles. 
doubting my ability to bear the weight of the burden imposed on me. What's the point of a future I never chose? I muttered into the void. The answer eluded me as the room kept its secrets, and invisible shackles clutched me tighter and tighter in the sterile atmosphere of my isolation ward. I could not free myself from the pressure of my parents' expectations. The ghostly figure of Beatrice, my future wife, hung over me like an impending storm. Seeking salvation, I turned to my office, where the walls echoed with the muffled echo of corporate life. As I entered, I saw the rhythmic movements of a mop. Irene the janitor had turned my office into an unexpected space for dancing. I stopped in the doorway, watching her graceful movements, and only she could hear the melody that accompanied her smooth steps. Everything else ceased to exist. It was just her, the mop, and the forgotten melody filling the space. She stopped, noticing my presence, and our eyes met. Oh, I didn't think there was anyone left in the building, she said, and her voice sounded like a gentle melody in the silence of the office. I couldn't hide a smile. Don't stop on my account. You're dancing beautifully. Her cheeks flushed slightly as she lowered her gaze. Thank you. I thought I was alone. But you're not alone. You bring magic here, I replied. For a moment, I forgot the gravity of the impending engagement. She continued to dance. It's my way of distracting myself from the routine. It helps me keep my sanity, she said. And you certainly brightened my day, I said as I entered the room. Let me buy you a coffee. The coffee maker started making noise. We settled into a corner for a break. The tension of my unwanted commitment faded in the presence of this unexpected dancer. May I know the name of such a talented dancer? I asked with genuine interest. Irene, she replied. And you are. I'm Ben. But I guess everyone knows you. Her smile was shy but genuine, and it filled the room with the warmth I'd been missing for weeks. I appreciate your kindness. It's not every day you get caught dancing with a mop. The coffee break turned into a conversation that flowed naturally, transcending office formalities. As the day progressed, I found solace in the unforeseen dance of life that connected me to Irene in ways I could not have imagined. I had no idea that this chance encounter would be a turning point and offer an alternative to the unwanted dance of fate waiting for me outside my office. Sanctuary, I thought as the coffee maker continued to wear. Irene, a humble cleaning lady turned dancer, sat across from me. Her eyes reflected the stories, but can I ask you something? I asked, leaning toward her with genuine curiosity. She nodded, sipping her coffee. Sure, we're just having coffee. No bosses, no formalities. Just two people. Irene, you dance beautifully. What brings you to scrubbing floors? I ask, not hiding my curiosity. She sighed, and a shadow flashed in her eyes. I'm studying, and I need a job. Cleaning floors fits my schedule and allows me to pay my bills. What about your parents? Why don't they support you in your studies? I asked cautiously, sensing that there was something more behind her words. The pause was short before she answered. I lost them, and my grandmother passed away last year. I'm sorry, I said quietly, realizing the gravity of her look. Thank you. I'm on my own now, she said, lowering her gaze to her mug. Is dancing a hobby or something more? I asked, trying to soften the conversation. A smile reappeared on her face. I took up dancing seriously when my- But after she left, I couldn't afford lessons. A practical profession is more important. I wondered about her path. Irene's eyes met mine, and her vulnerability became apparent. I'm doing my best to survive. As our conversation grew deeper, the distinction between boss and janitor began to fade. 
The coffee break turned into a place where we shared personal stories, and I realized that I was drawn to the hidden aspects of Irene's personality that weren't visible because of her humble exterior. Irene, what are you going to do tonight? I asked, trying to turn a spontaneous idea into reality. I have a free evening. Going back home is not an option. They want to marry me off there. I'm already working late tonight, she replied, a mixture of humility and humor in her voice. A mischievous smirk appeared on my lips. Maybe I'll invite you to a movie or a cafe. Please don't say no, or I'll die of boredom, and it'll be on your conscience. Irene giggled, and her warm laughter filled, Okay, I'll try, she said. We parted that evening outside her house, excited for an unplanned adventure. As we left, I couldn't help but marvel at the unexpected connection that had formed between us over coffee, a connection that promised to reveal all the layers of our lives in the chapters to come. The decision came from an unwavering desire to free myself from the shackles of an unwanted fate. Leaving my parents' home, I felt a heaviness in my chest, unfamiliar yet liberating. The walls of the house, once the epitome of security, now resembled the constraints from which I longed to be free. My mother stood on the threshold, her eyes clouded with tears, watching me with silent reproach and tenderness. Benjamin, her voice trembled, as did her hands, as she touched my shoulder. We need to talk. It's about Beatrice and the engagement. Her words sounded like a sentence I tried to run away from. Mom, my inner turmoil was reflected in my voice. I just can't talk about it right now. She took my hand and led me to the edge of my childhood bed where every crease in the bed reminded me of the pipe. Sit down, son. It's not just about the engagement, she said, and her words evoked mixed feelings of curiosity and anxiety in me. I complied, carefully sitting down on the bed where a boy once slept, unaware of the burdens of adulthood. What's the matter? I asked, trying to hide the trepidation in my voice. She sighed, as if gathering her strength to deliver an important message. You're just glowing. What happened? A good business deal. I smiled, but my smile was faint, like the glow of a distant star. No, Mom, it's much more than just a good business deal, I said, and I read defiance in my words. I've fallen in love. Her eyes widened in amazement, and I could see concern and hope struggling in them. In love. Her voice barely audibly trembled. In who? The one who makes my heart beat more often? I continued, the one who dances with a mop and daydreams to the monotonous whirring of the office coffee maker. My confession was full of defiance, but also sincerity. Her gaze softened, and she touched my hand gently. Love is a beautiful thing, son, but it all happens so fast. Are you sure you know this person? I know her well enough to see the spark in her eyes and feel the strength of her spirit. I answered confidently. I can't go to the engagement party, mother. It wouldn't be fair to either of us. My confession hung in the air like a heavy curtain separating the past from the future. My mother looked me straight in the eye and her concern grew like the clouds before a storm. But this is your future, Benjamin, our family's future. You can't give up everything for a passing passion. It's not a passing passion. Mom, my words were firm and resolute. It's a revelation. I have lived in the shadows, but now I have found the light that shows me the way. My resolve was unwavering and she withdrew her hand, a shadow of sadness in her gaze. What about your responsibilities? the business, our families, the legacy. Her words were full of weightiness. As I stood up from the bed, I felt the space around me shrink, as if the walls were trying to hold me in. I will find a way to handle these responsibilities without sacrificing my happiness, I stated, and my words held not just confidence, but promise. It's time to live for myself 
not the expectations of others. I left the room, leaving behind not only the child's bed and my mother's tears, but everything that once defined me. My departure from the nest was not just a physical distance, but a symbol of a profound change in my soul and heart. Irene smiled softly, her eyes reflecting deep understanding. Sometimes you have to get lost to find yourself, she said, and her words sounded like an echo of my own thoughts. Exactly. I agreed, feeling a connection forming between us that was deeper than mere words could express. Sometimes you have to leave behind the familiar world to find what really matters. We both fell silent, immersed in our own musings. There was a feeling in the air that this night was just the beginning of a long journey we would take to. Suddenly, Irene looked at me with an unexpected suggestion. Ben, let's do something crazy, she said with a spark in her eyes. Let's have a dance right here, under these office lights. I couldn't hide a smile. You always know how to surprise me, Irene, he replied, getting up from my chair. But a dance without music. She stood up and held out her hand to me. Who says we have no music? Her voice was full of laughter as she began to hum a tune, soft and exciting. We danced among the desks and office chairs. Our steps didn't need the accompaniment of an orchestra. All we needed was the rhythm of our hearts and the light that poured from the windows, illuminating our path. You know, I said as we slowed the dance. I've always dreamed of a moment like this, the moment when life becomes something more than just a sequence of days. Irene snuggled closer to me and whispered, so have I been, me too. Our dance under the office lights was a symbol of our rebellion against prescribed roles and expectations. We were two souls yearning for freedom, and that night we found it, albeit briefly. When the dance was over, we both knew that nothing in our lives would ever be the same again. We had found in each other an ally, a friend, and perhaps something more. But most of all, we found the courage to move forward, together or apart, in search of the stories we wanted to tell. Thank you, Irene, I said as we sat down again, for the dance, for the evening, for everything. She nodded, her smile warm and genuine. Thank you, Ben for being you. It was then that I realized our story was just beginning. Sometimes fate throws us surprises, I replied, feeling a new sense of wholeness dawning inside me. Perhaps that's how she reminds us that each of us is not just the sum of our circumstances, but the creators of our own reality. Irene nodded, as if the same note sounded in her thoughts. We're creating our story as we go along, Ben, and every new turn is a chance to start something amazing. We talked, and each word we spoke reinforced the realization that our lives were intertwined for a reason. We were like two travelers who met at crossroads and decided to walk together as long as their paths matched. You know, Irene, I always thought freedom was about being able to do whatever you wanted. But now I'm beginning to realize that real freedom is when you choose what's really important and let go of everything else. I shared my reflection. Freedom is about choice, I repeated thoughtfully, choosing who to be, who to be with, and how to live this one life. We both smiled, realizing that our conversation had moved to a new level of intimacy. The office had become not just a place for us to work, but a space for reflection, a place where we could be ourselves without fear of fates and expectations. As night fell on the city, the office light seemed to burn brighter, illuminating our solitude. We continued to talk, and each story, each laugh, each genuine emotion strengthened our bond, making it more than just friendship. Irene, I don't know what lies ahead of us, but I'm grateful that I'm not alone on this journey, I said, getting up to leave. So do I, Ben. Me too. Her words warmed me as I walked out of the office, returning to the rhythm of the city streets, which now seemed less loud and demanding. 
We both knew that this evening was more than just another workday coming to an end. It was the beginning of something new and exciting. The beginning of a journey we had decided to take together. In a dance under the light of the stars and street lamps. A dance of freedom and understanding. Sometimes the most sincere connections are born where you least expect them. I replied, feeling the wind play in Irene's hair, giving her an aura of something magical, matching the twinkling lights of the city below. We're all looking for someone to see the real us, someone who can see behind the mask we wear. Irene smiled, her eyes reflecting the glow of the city lights as if they were capturing and holding a piece of that beauty. You're right, Ben. Sometimes you just have to stop to see the whole picture, not just individual pieces of it. We stood side by side, absorbed in the view that was unfolding before us. The city lived its life, and we were part of it, but in that moment, it felt as if we were standing apart from its bustle, out of time. You know, Irene, I always thought a city was just a place, but now I realize it's so much more than that. It's a memory of the past, it's dreams of the future, it's a place where the paths of different people cross, and each of them leaves a part of themselves here. My words sounded thoughtful, a realization that every moment of life is a part of a larger canvas. Irene took my hand, and her touch was warm and reassuring. We're leaving something of ourselves here too, Ben. Our history. We stood like that immersed in thought, until the last rays of sunset gave way to the city below continued its endless dance. But on the roof, in the sanctuary above the world, time seemed to slow down. We witnessed day succeeding night, one chapter of our story gently transitioning into an as chaotic as our lives have been. I am grateful for this moment, for this night, for this city that brought us together, Irene said her voice full of gratitude. And so am I, Irene. Me too. I replied, knowing that this night on the roof would be one of those memories we would cherish, like a treasure found in the chaos of life, like a symbol of a bond that seemed able to endure anything. In that moment, when the silence of the hospital room was broken only by the sounds of medical equipment, Irene was my light in the darkness, her presence filled the room with something more meaningful than just silence and white walls. I felt like every breath, every look, every silent comfort from her were like anchors keeping me afloat in a sea of uncertainty. Irene said softly, but you could feel the unwavering strength in her voice. We couldn't have foreseen this, but we can get through this together. Her words were a bridge, connecting our present to the dreams of the future we shared on the rooftop. I understood that my physical wounds would heal, but the psychological scars required a different kind of care, a different kind of healing. Irene was willing to walk this journey with me, just as I was willing to walk it with her. Irene. I began, feeling the weight of each word. I don't know what tomorrow will bring. But I know that with you by my side, I'm ready to face any challenge. She took my hand, and her touch was like a promise. A promise to stay by my side despite all the storms and tempests. In that moment, I realized that our bond, our friendship, our shared history, is what gives meaning to each day, no matter how difficult tomorrow may be. We looked at each other and in her eyes, I saw a reflection of our shared journey. A journey that was not only our memories on the rooftop, but also those quiet moments in the hospital where every breath and glance became part of our unchanging dance of life. That night in the hospital was a new chapter in our story, filled with new promises and new determination. We didn't know what tomorrow would bring, but we knew that no matter what happened, we would be together. It was our quiet agreement, our unspoken promise to each other, and it was the strength that kept us both going. In that light of the hospital room, where every sound and every movement seemed amplified by the silence, Irene was my constant support. 
I tried to shield her from the burden she had taken on, but she stood unwavering, like a beacon in a storm pointing the way home. My meal, you don't have to give up your life for me, I whispered, feeling my chest constrict from the weight of her sacrifice. Ben, her reply was quiet but determined. Some things are more important than what we consider our lives. Our relationships, our understanding, our ability to be there for each other in difficult moments. That's part of life too, and I choose that. Her words were comforting, but I still struggled with the feeling that my struggle had become her burden. Irene didn't see it as a burden, however. She saw it as a choice that made life richer and fuller. Irene, your sacrifice, it changes everything. I said, trying to convey the depth of my gratitude and my apprehension at the same time. Life isn't just joy and accomplishments, Ben. It's also hardships and sacrifices. And when we face them together, they teach us to appreciate what we have and those who are with us. Her eyes spoke of finding comfort in her decision. On those nights, when the hospital absorbed the sounds of the city within us, we found comfort in our conversations, in our quiet resistance to fear and uncertainty. We talked about the future, about how we could rebuild our lives anew, together with new priorities and a new understanding of what really every day Irene was with me. Her sacrifice became part of our shared story. She was a reminder that love and friendship can take many forms and that self-sacrifice is not always loss. Sometimes it is the most powerful act of love, and so, in the shadows of the hospital room, we continued to dance our dance of life, slow and cautious, but full of determination and hope. We were bound not only by a common past, but also by a common future that we decided to build together, with new depth and new meaning. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, don't forget to hit, like, subscribe to our channel and activate notifications so you don't miss new episodes. Your support helps us to grow and create even more interesting content for you.